everybody. Welcome back to the G-Man Show. I'm broker owner of Greater Orlando, Greg Mann, and we're going to talk about insurance in the state of Florida. If you're trying to purchase a house, first time buyer, season buyer, you need to listen to what we're going to talk about in the next 15 minutes. I have today one of the insurance experts, John Tankersley. Welcome back to the show. How are you doing? I'm doing well, man. Thanks for having me back. Oh, I appreciate you coming in. Insurance in the state of Florida, difficult. It's getting more difficult. Yeah. How do we get a first time buyer or a seasoned buyer through the process of obtaining insurance when they're trying to purchase a home? Well, I think the very first, and that's a great question. I think the very first thing that folks have to get into their mind, whether they're first time home buyers or they're first time home buyers to Florida, because you got a lot of folks coming from other states buying houses here now, mm -hmm. or they're on their second or third property. They need to get it in their mind that insurance is now a process. It used to be something that was kind of ancillary to the real estate closing. You would pick it up the week of or the week before closing. And it was just something that happened and you went to the title company and your evidence of insurance was there in your closing package and everything went fine. It's no longer the case. Securing insurance in Florida now for a new real estate transaction, it's a process that could take a week, wow. sometimes more. And I'll share with you kind of why. So you have all these, I'm a broker, so you have all these Florida carriers that are selling insurance to you know, folks in Florida that are buying houses. Well, there's a certain number of them that right away aren't even gonna take a house that's got a roof that's over, say, 15 years old. Yeah. And then you've got some that say, well, we don't like the wiring in this house. And then you say, we don't like the, the, the electric panel in this house. So it's a process where you've gotta look at what's available as an insurance agent. We have to look at what's available where this house can go to be quoted for a policy. And a lot of times that's not just put, punching a bunch of buttons and having some rates spit out at us. A lot of times it's very granular. We are submitting things to carriers on underwriting requests, special exceptions, things of that nature. I think it's fair to say uh, just a normal quote for a normal house for a normal real estate transaction now takes two to three days to quote. And Greg, here's the thing that is important for your folks to know, the listeners and the viewers of, of your program. It can take one or two days to actually just bind that policy for closing. So in the span of five business days, that's a week. Mm -hmm. And that's just for normal stuff. Yeah. So if you've got houses that are specifically older and they've got older roofs or they've got some bumps and bruises, um, you know, a lot of times we have to take that information, we take the four point and the wind mitigation inspection, we have to send it to the carrier, they have to review it and then say, it's okay to bind this policy or it's okay to quote this policy. So it takes a lot longer. Yeah. It is not something you're gonna pick up the day of closing. So if, if a, a real estate agent is working with a first time buyer, mm -hmm. whether a seasoned agent or not, they need to ha sit down and have that conversation at the very beginning of the process. Hey. Mr. Buyer, we're going to get under contract on a house pretty quickly. Yeah. First thing you do when you're under contract, you've got to get your home inspection done, et cetera, et cetera. It's going to reveal a lot of things about this house. Yeah. But please, at the same time, start trying to get quotes for insurance. When you see costs for insurance have, have dramatically increased. Yes. Now, I think the average consumer is concerned about that. Why are the rates so high? Why are people being tripled? Why, am, why was I paying 3,000 and I'm paying 9,000? Is there a good answer to that? There is, and it's not uncomplicated, but the real baseline for the rates doing what they're doing in Florida, and really since the fourth quarter of 2019, it is because of loss ratios that the insurance companies have experienced in the state of Florida, and it's not really weather related. It's mm -hmm. more along the lines of the ability for uh, bad actors in the public adjusting and the attorney side and in the roofing side kind of locking arms, and they figured out ways to litigate against the insurance companies and I don't know if I've shared this stat with you before or not, but Florida represents 8% of the property insurance claims nationwide. And that actually is not bad, but it does represent 78% of the insurance litigation nationwide. That means 49 wow. other states, 49 other states, 
including Texas and California, which can be just as wacky as Florida, uh -huh. okay, make up 22%. And that's a, kind of an older figure. It may be even higher by now. Now, the legislation that was passed last December um, is, is supposed to remedy that and start to, start to whittle away at that. But we are in the state where we are, no pun intended, because of uh, the litigation aspect of Florida and the process that folks are going through to file claims. And the loss ratios of these companies have just skyrocketed. And their response is to, well, we're gonna make it tough to sell a new policy and we're gonna raise the rates on the policies that we do have out there. Your average Florida property insurance company got sued a thousand times a week in 2020 or 2021, I can't remember which year. That's a lot. That is a lot. So we are where we are because of a number of factors, that being one of the more significant ones. But, you know, we were talking earlier and you, you, were, you, were, you were thinking, well, you know, insurance is tough, it's tough to get. And I do think there's light at the end of the tunnel. Um, but one of the biggest things that I wanted to share with you this morning is that it's a process. It takes a long time uh, to secure and get. And, and if you're a first time home buyer, get it in your head. Insurance is a thing now. It is a thing and, it, and it's getting more difficult and it's causing problems for the consumer. It's causing problems for the seller of a home. Mm -hmm. There's, I'm seeing many deals get canceled because my buyer, the buyer that was buying my home couldn't get insurance. I'm back on the market. What do I do? I don't want to replace the roof, but I'm being forced to. Mm -hmm. I've got polybutylene pipe. I, mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with this pipe. It's the latest version of the polybutylene pipe. It's probably as good as the copper pipe in my next door neighbor's house, but I can't get insurance, but he can. Um, electrical. All these issues start becoming like a triple whammy, basically, you know, yeah. electric. So it's a perfect storm. It is. How does that seller even get their head around this? What Do they go out and replace all the main elements of the house before they try to sell it? No, I think the pragmatic approach for folks that are trying to sell their house and when they use a real estate agent, which they should. For okay, sure, yeah. Okay. I think that there has to be a new level of cooperation between the listing agent and the buyer's agent. And I've seen this turn a lot in a positive way Good. over the last 12, 18 months. Yeah. If you're on the listing side, you as the listing agent, you need to be pragmatic with your seller. Hey, look, you've got a house here where the roof is original and the year build is 1998. Yeah. Um, You've got Federal Pacific Electric panel in here. Your AC unit, we had one last week, Greg, that was 38 years old, okay? Wow. They have an AC unit that's 38 years old or they've got a hot water heater uh, that's 28 years old or 25 years old. I think that the listing agent, when he or she begins to have that conversation with their client, they need to be realistic and pragmatic about it. I don't want you to go out and spend a bunch of money on shrubbery and get the driveway pressure washed or yeah. slap some new paint yeah. in the bathroom. I want you to go get a new the roof. <laughs> a, well, I want you to go get a new panel. I want you to go get yeah. a new roof. Now, you know, obviously those are big ticket items. The roof, you know, obviously I think the average roof now is somewhere around 15 to 20,000, I'd I, say so, know, yeah. um, depending on the material of it, but getting a new AC unit, getting a, getting a new um, water heater, uh, getting a, a panel replaced, which costs about fourteen, fifteen hundred bucks. These are things that sellers can do, which will facilitate the sale of their home. They will leapfrog a ton of inventory. And buyers agents will tell you this. If I've got somebody that's trying to buy a house and I've got one that's ready to go and can get insurance and I've got one that's got a bunch of bumps and bruises and hair on it. And I don't know if I'm going to get to the closing table, but I know if I show this, I can. You know, I think that means something. It really does. But honestly, it's becoming a difficult conversation. I list a lot of houses. Yeah. And, you know, just if I came to your house and you're selling your house and I come up with this long list of needs a new roof, needs electrical panel, needs the AC, needs a hot water heater, needs a blah, 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 blah. Honestly, the other agent you spoke to the day before hasn't mentioned that. Yeah. It's going to jeopardize me getting that business, even yeah. though I'm doing the, the absolute best for you. 
the average agent's struggling to get over that. Mm -hmm. um, and I know you guys, you in particular, are helping. You've got the the, the, the red, yellow, green chart that we all yeah. use, which has been a really great tool. Yeah. And for the, for the consumer who's not aware of that, there's certain things that you can't insure. Yeah. There's certain things you, you can, and there's things that you can definitely insure. And, and that kind of cheat sheet's helped a lot. I think it's a, it's a big, horrible pill for an owner to swallow that, well, I'm gonna sell my house, I'm gonna make about $60,000 out of the sale, I'm gonna use that to pay off my car loan, I'm gonna buy another home, but, but I'm not because I've gotta spend 60 grand putting a new roof, new AC, and blah, blah, blah. When's it gonna end? When's that going to end? So I, I think, well, I'll, I'll, I'll address the first part of your, your question first. First of all, you know, the red, yellow, green chart that I have, eight out of 10 homes that come our way, Yeah we can find an insurance solution for them to get them to closing on with some minor adjustments or some minor expenditures and then get them insured and then move on from there. There are certain ones that this has to come out if you wanna close, yeah. if you wanna get insurance and you wanna close. Um, but for the majority of homes out there, um, if the listing agent is, is pragmatic and works with the buyer's agent, we can find an, a solution for closing. But the second part of what you were saying is, when is it gonna end? So I was having lunch with a uh, gentleman last week and he's a great guy. He's been in the mortgage business many, many years. He's been around, he's big in Central Florida. And he said, tell me if I'm wrong. I don't think insurance is gonna get a lot cheaper, but I think it's gonna get a lot easier in 2024. Well, I hope so. I think so. I think that when a lot of the legislation that got passed in December of 2022 bakes in and folks have the ability to come back into the state and sell policies and capacity goes up, insurance gets easier. I really do believe I'm an optimist. I'm a glass half full kind of guy. You and I have had many conversations about this. I, I believe that 2023 will be better in the second half of this year, and I think 2024 will be even better. I think if you're being a realist and you're in the in real estate business, I think 2024 is a pivotal moment, and I think 2025 and beyond, is it, it, it gets better. I really do. Well, I hope it does because not only is it difficult for the consumer and the, you know, the seller being a consumer, yeah. it's, it's extremely difficult for someone such as yourself because yeah. I'm sure there's many times someone's come to you, can you get me insurance? And you've, and you've done absolutely the best you can. You just <laughs> cannot get them insurance. Or you can, but it's ridiculously expensive. Yeah. And, and quite often, you're in the same kind of industry as I am. You only get one bite of the cherry to impress that customer. And that's, the, that's across every industry. But it's even more important for you because if the words come out of your mouth, I can't insure you, they're moving on to somebody else. We face the same challenge. That? We face the same challenges. Okay, so the conversations that we have with the folks that that you refer and, and our real estate partners and our mortgage partners, the same conversations you have, we have. What we tell them is we're very pragmatic about it. We're saying most of the time we can get you from point A to point B. You got to work with us a little bit on some things uh, that are fairly minor in scope, but we can get this done. But you know, in terms of being honest with folks, that's something that we really are in, in, in with regards to, are you gonna be able to get insurance? I'm never derogatory about other people who sell insurance or no, other people who have insurance agencies. I've got lots of friends and colleagues in the insurance world and they're fabulous people. And um, I, I, I talk with them on a monthly basis. But just like you've got bad actors in just about every other sector, you've got some folks that will fire up their computer and run through a citizen's deal and hit the bind button. And they know, they know that after closing, that buyer is gonna get a nasty gram get from the company saying you're gonna be canceled. We don't do that. We tell you, this is the way we get you to closing. This is what you have to do after closing, which can improve your insurance journey. If you work with us, and you're pragmatic and you're real, we can get you where you need to be. But you have some folks that it's hard for it to resonate with them. Yeah. Well, I got a lot more questions, but I got to take a break. So we'll, we'll oh. get back in a few minutes and, and keep that thought. Thanks for watching. We're going to take a quick commercial break. Join us in a few minutes. 
Managing your investment property is as easy as one, two, three. One, sign up at GoRent123.com. Two, let Greater Orlando Realty handle everything for you when it comes to managing your property, from qualifying tenants to collecting rent, processing maintenance requests, and everything in between. Three, sit back, relax, and count all that money you're making. Earning passive income on your property is as easy as one, two, three with Greater Orlando Realty. Visit GoRent123.com today. Hey, welcome back to the G-Man Show. Here with Laura Collins from First International Title. Laura, tell me what you do, tell me how you do it, and tell me how people get hold of you. Thank you. I am Laura Collins with First International Title. My phone number is 314-265-9000. And I always appreciate um, a text to get to know me. I um, am one of the sales reps for the downtown office of, or, of First International Title. We do have 37 offices, and I represent our downtown office and Waterford Lakes office. Um, one of the things about me with my clients, my clients are realtors and loan officers mostly, and anybody that's selling their house, they get to choose their title company. And so that's why a lot of people depend on their realtors to choose their title company, and that's why I am, that's, they're my clients. I have worked at Disney for 20 years, and anybody that works with me is going to have that, that kind of customer service that Dis Disney has instilled in me. I love to help. I love to be available and I want to make sure that um, they are growing their business and it is about them. So you'll do open houses, you'll go to offices, you'll help agents build their business, all with a cheerful smile. How do people get hold of you? Um, you can again get a hold of me 314-265-9000. Hey, I'm Greg Mann from Greater Orlando Realty. Welcome back to the G-Man Show. A little bit earlier, we was talking insurance with John Tankersley. There's so much to talk about with insurance. But one of the questions I've got, and I get it a lot, selling homes is, John, why can't I get insurance on a home I'm buying when the current owner has insurance? That's a great question. And you hear that a lot as a realtor. I'll just, I'm just gonna call my guy, or I'm gonna call the guy that insured this house and everything's gonna get zipped up. The problem with that, Greg, is if they've had that policy for a long time, let's say they've had that policy, and I say long time, like four or five years, uh -huh. you know, I think the average homeowner, what is it, seven, eight years? Seven, eight home. years, yeah. So let's say that they've been with that company, let's, seven, eight years. The underwriting guidelines and the capacity of the company that sold them that policy at that specific date and time when they bought that house is, 180 degrees where it is now. Yeah. And so you got a lot of companies that say, yep, yeah, we'll insure X amount of homes and pick your zip code, uh, 32714, well, Altamont Springs. Yeah, that, yeah. Okay. But we're not going to sell anymore in 32714 in 2022 and in 2023 until our loss ratios go down. Or we used to take homes that were older, homes that were, you know, built in 1950 or 1940. I lived in College Park for many years, so I know what it's like to get insurance on an older home. But they're not doing that anymore. No. So just going back to whoever sold the original policy is not a viable solution. And I think that folks need to know that. And Something else that needs to be said, and again, this is not a shot at um, our good friends that are in the captive world. I'm speaking specifically of, of your state farms, your all states, and your farm viewers. A lot of those agents have been around a long time. They have some broker uh, capability and they can help their clients. But the big national companies that we all think of as kids when we think about insurance in Florida have largely abandoned Florida. Yeah. They don't really have a major interest in insuring properties in Florida. So you got a lot of folks who think, particularly ones moving out of state, oh, well, I'll just call my State Farm folks or USAA or any of these folks. They're not really doing business in Florida. And it's not the agent that represents that company's fault. And a lot of those folks do have some broker capability. I want to be careful there that I'm not yeah. taking a shot or you know shooting an arrow at a State Farm agent because I'm not. So, so when you talk about people, have, you know, the, the big companies that are abandoning Florida. Yeah. What should the consumer do? I've lived in my house five years. I'm at the mailbox one Thursday afternoon and the first letter that comes out is from the insurance company. It's a nasty Open thing. immediately and yeah. you're like, whoa. And I've just opened it and I've been canceled. I'm mad as hell and I'm yeah. not gonna take it anymore. Uh -huh. So this is a conversation that I have weekly with folks who get referred to me, oftentimes by their real estate agent, yeah. which proves that you guys are really trusted advisors. 
And they'll call me up and they'll say, I just had a premium renewal and I was paying 3,000 and these SOBs want 8,000. Uh -huh. I'm not paying that. And I'm gonna cancel these guys. And first thing I tell folks that are in that boat, and there's a lot of oars in that boat, be very careful. I know you're upset, but what I want you to do and what I want you to realize as somebody who just had this happen, they got the nasty gram, we wanna have a solution before we cut the head off of the insurance snake. Yes. In other words, don't call up and say, I'm canceling my policy, I'm just not doing this. We have a lot of folks that do that. And it sounds crazy, but they're so mad. Well, it's a knee-jerk reaction. It's, it's a knee-jerk uh, reaction. Yeah. I'll go find insurance. Well, we can help a lot of folks, but it's important that you keep that fundamental base option open. And what I tell a lot of folks um, that have had this type of thing happen is, and it's not paid through their mortgage payments, not paid through their escrow account. And you, you got a lot of folks in Florida that pay their own insurance. Get on a payment plan if it's an annual policy. Oh yeah. Okay. If you owe, if you paid three thousand last year, and you open up the mailbox, and seven thousand is the new number, and you just wrote a check in previous years, call your agent and get on a pay plan. Most companies have one, and that does two things. First of all, it it doesn't bomb your wallet for yeah. an annual premium. And secondly, it gives you time to get an insurance solution. Oftentimes you'll work with the agent who um, sold you the original policy. Yeah. And by the way, agents don't wake up every morning and go, ah, I need a new car, Greg. I think I'm gonna raise your policy. These rate increases come directly from the carriers. I just want everybody to well, know good, that. I'll throw some shade to my other insurance <laughs> sales salesman friends and, and, and ladies and gentlemen. but. So get on a payment plan if you can. And the other thing is, you know, don't cancel right away. Get on a payment plan if you can because that buys you time. And the other thing I would share is be realistic. Yes. How old is your house? I had a guy call me a um, week before last. He lived in 32801. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's right in the center of downtown Orlando. Uh -huh. Older homes for sure. Lots of older homes. Mm -hmm. Thornton Park, Delaney Park, yeah. College Park, Winter Park, anything with park after it with the exception of Baldwin and, Flo and Central Florida is yeah. older. Uh -huh. He had not replaced his roof and I think the roof was almost 40 years old. Whew. Okay. He had an AC unit in there that was almost 30 years old. He hadn't done anything in terms of maintenance or upkeep. And I had a conversation with him and let's call him Bob. I said, Bob, what have you really done to make your house be insurable? Yeah. And it kind of struck home. Mm -hmm. No pun intended. Yeah. And he said, okay, I'm gonna get on a payment plan and I'm gonna go get a new AC unit and I'm gonna go get a quote for the roof. Well, good for, good for Bob. Good for Bob. Yeah. But I think be realistic about the, the real insurability of your house. Your next best step when you're in this spot, we'll call it the nasty gram box, buy yourself some time and get the most information you can and start shopping. Don't just arbitrarily or out of anger, cancel your policy and say, I'm not giving these guys another nickel. Because if you go for more than 30 days in Florida without insurance and you have a mortgage, two things happen. First, the mortgage company does forced place coverage on you, which they, they hate. They don't want to do it. No, but they do it a lot. They do it. And if you think these rates are bad, those rates are bad. Yes. Okay. That's number one. And number two, when you go to get insurance, or let's say you don't have a mortgage, you just decide I'm going to self-insure and hurricane season comes and you're like, well, I'm going to call John up and get some insurance for hurricane season. If you've been more than 30 days without coverage, it is a big surcharge added on to your policy premium because they're afraid you're going to put a claim in right when you bought insurance because you haven't had any in a while. And that can make a premium unbearable. It can make it to the point where you couldn't afford to get a new policy even if you qualified. That's great. That's great information. There's a lot of people out there that are self-insuring because of the yeah. very element we're in. Yeah. Um, John, I think you're you're the, the best in the business. You always come through with a solution. You've Thank got you. you've got a, a good head on your shoulders. You're looking out for the consumer. You're not just looking out for yourself. How does someone get hold of you to get insurance? So 
It's John at JohnTankersley.com, um, and I developed an intake system that's for real estate and mortgage professionals, but also for folks that are just consumers out there shopping. It's called GetHomeInsuranceNow.com. It's powered by Sile Insurance. I'm plugged in with those folks. They're really good people. We've had a fabulous uh, relationship here. We just recently started, and we have access to all available Florida markets. So if you go to GetHomeInsuranceNow.com, fill out the form. I immediately am going to take that information. I'm going to start looking for solutions for your home insurance. Well, John, thanks for being on the show. Much appreciated. I've learned a lot today. Hopefully the consumers have, and hopefully this insurance business gets a little bit easier for everybody, You know, a little bit less wear on your, on your wallet as the consumer and, and less stress for you. I'm Greg Mann. Thanks for watching The G-Man Show. We'll be right back. Managing your investment property is as easy as one, two, three. One, sign up at GoRent123.com. Two, let Greater Orlando Realty handle everything for you when it comes to managing your property, from qualifying tenants to collecting rent, processing maintenance requests, and everything in between. Three, sit back, relax, and count all that money you're making. Earning passive income on your property is as easy as one, two, three with Greater Orlando Realty. Visit GoRent123.com today. Hey, I'm Greg Mann. Welcome back to the G-Man Show. Mortgage Minute, Sonia, welcome back. Thank you, thanks for having me. In financial environment's changing. Um, I keep hearing this phrase, HELOC. Yes. Let's talk about HELOCs. First of all, what are they? Yes, so HELOCs are home equity line of credit. If you own a home and you have plenty of equity, which a lot of us do nowadays, you know, a lot of people that got their rates back in the twos and the threes a few years back, and they're holding on to their homes, they don't want to sell them, you know, and prices have gone up in the last couple of years, so they have plenty of equity in there. So what a home equity line of credit does is releases some of those funds that are just sitting there, not doing anything for the, for the owner, they can, pull that money out and they can, you know, repair the home, buy an investment property, which a lot of them are doing nowadays, you know, whatever the needs are. It just releases that equity in the home. So they can use that for whatever they want, buy a boat, buy a car, buy anything they want to. Yes. How long do they get to pay it back? What's the rate, what, how much does it cost and what's the rates typically? Great question. And being a broker, we have options to shop them around in many different lenders. And a lot of different lenders have a lot of different programs. I don't always say if you want the lowest payment, the lowest rate when it comes to home equity lines, I may not be the best person for that. And, and I always say that to my borrowers as you know, I am the girl to go to when you want to buy the home, when you want to refinance. But when it comes to home equity lines of credit, the reason they will come to me for is I have one option where they can be released in five days. I can give them money. So if they're looking to do something and it needs to be a last minute and they need quick money, very little you know, documents, five days, I can release that money for them. So the process is really quick. Very quick, yes. And it's my understanding, they don't need to use the money immediately. They can get the loan in place. It can sit there for a while until they find that great boat or the car, and then they're off and running. So, that, so actually, there are different lenders that do different things. We do have some options that are fixed rate, but you have to withdraw all of the money up front, and you can put it back if you don't use it. I have another lender that will do, and the rates kind of vary between each other two. They'll have some minimum 50,000 out initially when you get it, and the rest could be just sitting there. But you can put this money back if you don't use it. They're all kind of the same scenario. Take yeah. the money out, and then you can put it back if you don't need it. Some of them have 50,000 minimum, some have the whole amount, others may have not have any. So every, you know, I put the right buyer or the right borrower with the right lender. Depending. So another quick question I got, if I take one of these loans out, how does it affect the credit score? Because the credit score rules. The credit score rules, and it's just like having anything else on your credit. We pull you, it's a hard pull on your credit. Usually they say it's three to five, you know, it costs them three to five points on your on your credit report when end up with there's a hard hit. And that's, I'm not a credit expert necessarily to say exactly how many, but that's my understanding. It's, it's about three to five points that come off. And so it will be on there, it will be a liability, the full amount of the loan sits on the loan. So depending on, every borrower is different. If somebody has a huge income, you know, that amount sitting on there may not be a big deal. Some of them that have, may not have a large income, but you're putting a new loan on it that might, you know, hold them back from buying something else. So, I mean, it's like any other credit card that goes on there, but sometimes it can help. Sometimes they may not have any other lines and this may help improve their score too. 
So if they want to get hold of you to get this great tool in place, how do they do that? So my phone number is 407-403-8658 and my website is loanswithsonia.com. Hey, I'm Greg Mann. You've been watching The G-Man Show. Keep tuned. We'll be right back with some great news on how to keep your house clean.